Well, now we've got another passage and the title of the passage is The Little Ice Age. Okay, Little Ice Age. Now I want you to imagine ice, ice age, frozen land and all that. It was uh, one historic age which is called Ice Age. The Little Ice Age. And the questions that we have, first of all we have list of headings. After that we have summary completion and then we have matching clear so let's take a start with list of headings first of all heading number eight and heading number five they have used them as sample headings so first you should cross heading number five and heading number eight from the list okay heading number five and heading number eight just cross the number so that you don't read it you are not concerned with these headings. One heading will be used once only. Okay? So, let's just take a start. List of headings. Now, in order to do this, it's a good idea to read all the headings. And this reading is called skim reading. Skim read all the headings and your imagination will help you a lot in list of headings. Whatever you read, first imagine Ice Age. Then when you read the headings, you need to actually imagine them. I tell you how. Heading number one, predicting climatic changes. Imagine climatic changes. What are climatic changes? Sun, rain, snow, and all that. Just imagine that. Predicting climatic changes. Heading number two, relevance of little ice age today. Today means present. So relevance of ice age with present, that is the second heading. Heading number three, how cities contribute to climate change. Cities contribute and climate change means the role of cities to climate change. Heading number four, human impact on the climate. Now for human impact, they will talk about human activities. They will talk about pollution and all that. Human impact on climate. And whenever you read the headings, don't read the number of heading and don't read article. For example, Heading number two is the relevance of the little ice age today. Just read it as relevance of little ice age today. Okay, heading number five, past climatic, how past climatic conditions can be determined. And by the way, for this, they will use past tense, second form of the verb, had, used to be, past years and all that. Heading number five, we are not going to read. Heading number six, growing need for weather records. Growing need for weather records means there is more need for weather records. Heading number seven, study covering a thousand years. One thousand years study, right? A study of one century, a study of, uh, uh, what do you say, uh, not one century, ten centuries, right? One thousand years. Heading number nine, enough food at last. Means they tried to and at the end they found enough food. Okay. Now, will we read paragraph A? No, because there is no heading there. Will we read paragraph B? Let's just read it from paragraph B. The little ice age lasted from roughly 1300 until the middle of the 19th century. Remember one thing. There is one sentence in this paragraph which is called topic sentence or which is called main idea of the paragraph. That sentence will match with heading. Sometimes you will find that sentence in the first line, otherwise in the second line, otherwise in the middle or sometimes at the end. So please, let's, let's follow this. The little ice age lasted from roughly 1300 and all that. Will you please come to second line? Only two centuries ago, Europe experienced a cycle of bitterly cold winters. Okay, please come to fourth line after the full, full stop. The fourth line after the full stop, paragraph B. The climatic events of the little ice age did more than help shape the modern world. Ice age shape the modern world means today, whatever it's happening with, with our present. They are the deeply important context for the current unprecedented global warming. Current, today, now go back and see. Relevance of little ice age today. Now relevance of little ice age, they say little ice age did more than help shape the modern world. So this is the relevance 
okay and modern world then they say they are the deeply important context for the current unprecedented global warming clear so heading number two for question number 14 on your answer sheet in front of 14 you will write two now please cross heading number two also because you don't want to read it again for good time management are we going to read paragraph c no because that's already done now let's go on to paragraph d and by the way uh, if you want to further manage your time it's a good idea to start list of heading from those paragraphs which are short because you can do them quickly like paragraph d is short paragraph e is long f is short like that okay paragraph d this book is a narrative history of climatic shifts during the past 10 centuries does it ring a bell past 10 centuries so which heading seven a study covering a thousand years so sometimes list of headings will be as simple as this but not always okay yeah so we are done with heading number seven also please cross it there as well i mean this is for good time management otherwise you will read the same heading again you will put it somewhere then you say Achha, ye to maine pehle bhi hai. not like that okay okay now we go on to paragraph e now see it's a long paragraph so we need to read from the beginning middle and ending it is known that i'm reading paragraph e it is known that little ice age cooling began in greenland and in arctic okay now please come to fourth line europe found it europe between 1315 and 1319 when thousands perished in a continent-wide famine okay underline famine famine is related to food now let's go on by 1400 weather had become decidedly more unpredictable and stormier with sudden shifts and lower temperatures that culminated in the cold decades of the late 16th century fish were a vital commodity in growing towns and cities where food supplies were a constant concern so what did they have there fish famine this takes us towards food now please come to the last two lines increased productivity from farmland made some countries self-sufficient in grain and livestock means enough food available understand from famine and from food from fish and then the last two lines give you the heading what is that the increased productivity from farmland <coughs> made some countries self-sufficient in gra grain and livestock self-sufficient means enough food available means enough for you now go back tell me which heading heading number nine enough food at last and by the way whenever they say something at last it's a good idea to read the paragraph from the end they talked about famine first then they talked about scarcity of food and at last they said we had enough food right so heading number seven is which one is gone heading number nine is gone as well now we have paragraph f please come to paragraph f global temperatures began to rise slowly after 1850 with the beginning of modern warm period okay there was a vast migration from europe by land hungry farmers and others to which the famine caused by the irish potato blight contributors to north america australia new zealand and southern africa just imagine farmers migrated okay millions of hectares of forest and woodland fell before the newcomers access what did they do they cut down the trees farmers cut down the trees so what is that that is the human factor okay and what happened afterward access between 1850 uh, and 1890 as intensive european farming methods expanded across the europe uh, next line is important the unprecedented land clearance released vast quantities of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now tell me which heading is appropriate for that human impact on the climate for human they use the word farmers for human impact they use the word cutting down the trees for uh, agriculture 
and for human act activity they use the word this added carbon dioxide to the atmosphere so heading number four is also gone that's it okay clear all right you can just repeat it all when you go back home you should repeat it all